What's going on everybody? So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to cure velvet disease by using hydrogen peroxide. Like many of you guys, I've been dealing with this curse's disease since as long as I can remember. Velvet has been such a frustrating disease for me to treat, mostly because of how infectious it is and how long it takes to freaking get rid of this damn thing. But fear not my friends, because the cure I have found has been hiding underneath our medicine cabinet this whole damn time. First, let's do a quick talk about velvet life cycle. Velvet disease, also known as Piscinodinium velulare. Am I saying it correctly? Piscinodinium pilulare. Ah, close enough. Is a type of dinoflagellate, which are mostly considered algae. Now, what makes these guys super annoying to deal with is that you can only really cure them when they're in their dinospore form, when using conventional chemical methods. Most often, as we will discuss later, copper. That's because in the feeding tropons and resting tomont stages, they are protected by this strong outer shell called tika. And at this stage, they're pretty much invincible to any medication used to treat velvet. Now, you're gonna know if your fish got velvet if they look like they've just been salted before being cooked. Just like what's happening to my better mandor in this clip. You see those fine dusty looking things? Yeah, that's the feeding tropons. And when to bed, he's not feeling that great right now. It's even in his freaking eyeball, look at that. Now the most dangerous part is when the tropons heavily infect the gills. That's why a lot of times when the fish are really sick, you kind of see them hanging out on the surface. They are literally being suffocated by the parasites. Now, the most common conventional method to treat velvet is to use copper sulfate in combination with higher temperature. And it works because copper sulfate at the correct dose is toxic to dinospores and the increase in temperature allows for the speed up of the life cycle of the parasites so that the fish can be free of the disease more quickly. But there's a couple problems when using this method. And the first one is dosing copper can be very difficult to get right. That's because for copper sulfate to work properly, it needs to be at at least 2.0 to 2.5 parts per million. Dosing a little too high means you can potentially kill your fish, and dosing too low means you're not really killing the parasites. To make matters worse, testing kits for copper are hugely inaccurate and very difficult to read. You just gotta kinda trust what the bottle says. I had far too many experience where I followed the bottle's recommended dose only to be frustrated and disappointed because the fish just got worse after two weeks and that's because the bottle itself was underdose. The second problem is the duration of treatment when using copper. You see, when the parasite is in your aquarium, they're in various life stages. That means you got a bunch of tomons hiding away on the gravel of your aquarium, reproducing and staying dormant for like 4 to 14 days. That means for you to completely eradicate the disease, you need to treat your fish with copper for 30 days minimum. And lastly, the parasite must be exposed to the copper for a specific amount of time. I actually don't know what that time is. Exposure time is why sometimes in heavily stocked tank, you never seem to get rid of velvet. What's probably happening is that the dinospores are infecting the fish before they can actually die from copper exposure. Now, I want to explain to you why hydrogen peroxide is a much better way to fight that pesky velvet disease. Unlike copper, hydrogen peroxide pretty much kills on contact. That's because hydrogen peroxide works by oxidizing any organic substances that it comes in contact with. This makes it really effective at killing single cell microbes while generally sparing multicellular complex animals. Because animals like fish have skins and scales that can take the blunt trauma of the oxidizing effect of hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide also has the added benefit of only breaking down to water and oxygen. Not only are these compounds non-toxic, but they also have the added benefit of helping the fish breed because velvet disease tend to infect the gills and suffocate the fish. But be warned, if dosed improperly, it can quickly kill your fish. I find that an effective dose is very dependent on the type of fish you are trying to treat. Larger scaly fish such as Unimaculatas and Antutas tend to fare much better than smaller fish such as Awimachinata and Chinoids. Oddly enough, I find that Splendid, Cosinas, and some of the larger Garamis tend to fare actually very well. Not surprisingly, some of the smaller blackwater nanofish, such as Rasboras and Bororas, has very low tolerance and probably need to be dosed at a lower dose over a longer period of time. 
Now before I get started on the method that I use to treat my fish, I want to remind everybody that this is purely experimental. I honestly don't really know the most effective dose and this is just based on my observation and experimentation. First thing I do is I place the infected fish in a 1 gallon in bare bottom tanks with 1 gallon of clean water. You want to make sure that the tanks are very clean and free of organic materials. That's because you want the hydrogen peroxide to only oxidize the velvet itself. I also kept my pH pretty low at 5.5 because hydrogen peroxide is much more stable at lower pH. But it's also because I keep most of my fish in those pH range anyway. I also make sure to place a heating pad underneath the tanks and set the temperature at 84 degrees. I know it says 87 degrees but I was just trying to bring up the temperature. I don't necessarily think you need a heating pad but I did it anyway because I know Velvet does not like higher temperature. Next thing I did was I grabbed myself a bottle of 3% hydrogen peroxide. I make sure that the only ingredients in the bottle itself is hydrogen peroxide and water. I am simply just using the generic hydrogen peroxide that I bought at Rite Aid. I'm sure other brands work too, you just gotta make sure that the only ingredients is hydrogen peroxide and water. You can simply check by looking at the back of the bottle. Then I simply pour the hydrogen peroxide in the glass flash and by using a 10 milliliter syringe, I simply draw out 6.5 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. This will give us a concentration of 50 parts per million when mixing with 1 gallon of water. 50 parts per million is the dose that I tend to use when I treat fish that have high tolerance to hydrogen peroxide. Now if this is the first time you're using it on your fish, I recommend using one third or one half doses just to see how your fish will react. From what I found, fish with low tolerance such as nanofishes should only be used 15 parts per million. Here is a simple cheat sheet to kind of find out how much hydrogen peroxide you need to get the appropriate amount of parts per million. I went ahead and squirted in 6.5 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide into these individual tanks. And yes, I did squirt in 6.5 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide in the cocinas. That's because I have treated them before with 6.5 milliliters, but I do recommend using only half that dosage when treating splendens and cocinas. I didn't do it in this video, but I do recommend giving a good swirl to make sure that the hydrogen peroxide is evenly distributed. Oh, and you also want to be very careful with hydrogen peroxide because it is very corrosive. Look what it did to my fingers. You can really see how hydrogen peroxide has oxidized and bleached the top layer of my fingers. Amazing, isn't it? Now, I want to show you a video of the before and after of the three different types of fish after 48 hours. As you can see, most of the fish are already velvet free. The only exception is the better mandos, in which case I will have to dose it again at 25 or 15 parts per million. In fact, you actually kind of want to monitor these fish for at least a week and redose if necessary every 48 hours. Do this until you're comfortable that your fish is disease free. I want to end this video by giving credit to the saltwater folks. Those guys have been dealing with their own version of velvet disease and the use of hydrogen peroxide to treat the disease was really their idea. It just goes to show you how much we can learn if we open our minds and take in unconventional ideas. If you guys have any questions, please leave it on the comments below. I will be further experimenting with hydrogen peroxide, particularly when it comes to quarantining fish and possibly treating for other diseases such as bacterial disease. Till next time guys.